There was like 50 cop cars and a SWAT team and a helicopter and four dogs downstairs waiting for some guy on the 17th floor. Yeah. It was wild. It was yeah, right they now. were like, we can't send a cop unit to you guys because nobody got hurt. This is not priority. Meanwhile, 12 cop cars are next door yep. trying to dr bust this like drug lord. Yep. So I'm like. Gang, welcome back to the channel, the Swaley Channel. This is our first ever podcast starring Swaggy C, your host, and your other co-host, Bailey Dayton, my wife. Woo! That's me, guys! Everybody Yay! clap. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> this is our first ever podcast, and babe, tell the people why you feel like you wanted to start a Swaley podcast and not just the penthouse as well. Yeah, okay, so um, Swaley podcast had to happen because I feel like when Swag and I got together, everybody knew the dynamic of our relationship. Everybody understood that we were like besties. And then him and I both kind of started our separate brands and we neglected the Swaley gang, the people that love us and understand us. So now we have to talk and we also have a different aspects of our relationship that y'all don't see. So y'all like to be nosy. We know y'all like to be nosy. So we just gonna let you in. No, we know y'all like we to be nosy because like be nosy. the last time we did a video on this channel, Y'all found our marriage certificate. Yo, and, and leaked we, it. Y'all leaked it. We didn't yeah, even tell the world we were married. That was disrespectful. Married. That's probably why. Yeah. That's that why was, we took that, a break. That's probably why we, we took, took a break. We took a two-year break. Yeah, that's disrespectful. We got married, and a random fan searched Jackson County, like, Missouri Missouri website, and was like, yo, Swaggy and Bailey are have a secret. They had a yeah. whole five-page article, and I was like, nah, and I can't. And it, like, spread like wildfire. We had, like... Uh, networks hitting us up like you guys are married and we're like yo it's really not that deep we just got a, a certificate we never had a ceremony thanks never to y'all yeah so this is why that like obviously the world knows you know you're pregnant right now <gasps> but do they this is why yeah they do this is coming out <laughs> after you know what i mean this episode's coming out after but this is why i wanted to keep it a secret you know and i wouldn't be surprised if somebody tried to leak this as well and see this in public. So yeah. neither here nor there. We feel like we wanted to come back to give you all the best content We're giving you guys world. another chance in a, the best possible <laughs> way. No, for real, because we love our Sway the Gang, and it just got a little bit too crazy, but we want you guys to know we love you. So yeah. we're going to And I feel be. like in, in that time, the two years, which we're going to talk about right now, I feel like we've grown so much, and I feel like they deserve to see it all. Yeah. And I feel like uh, we've gotten to a point and a place with creativity and storytelling that I feel like nobody – in the space that we're in talk about it creates better content Period. than us I, I firmly believe nobody creates better content than us so it's time to uh put our money where our mouth is so we are in la obviously we are back here and I'm, we've had a lot of conversations discussions on the pressure you feel while living here yeah why do you feel so much pressure in la and we've had conversations about you going back and forth on being a stay-at-home wife because we're good financially, but also I'm an individual and I have gifts of my own. I want to yeah. do my own thing sometimes. One, I feel um, pressure living in LA, LA because I'm one and an empath so I feel all the energy around me in LA is very hectic. So with all of, you know, like even like it's weird but like there's kind of a spirit of depression that comes in LA. There's all these people trying to prove themselves so there's a spirit of just like overcompensation and it gets like heavy sometimes i'm from missouri so i also come from like the suburbs where it's peace and i lived on a lake and i like to be in nature and we live downtown la so concrete is not like my thing um but also too of uh, i did have a career of my own and in the best possible way like i graduated from you know a really awesome school i modeled on my own i started you know like my pageantry journey i like hit my career achievement and then there's a point where it's like, okay, now you're going to be a wife. But for me, being a wife doesn't mean, okay, you don't exist anymore. Your, your job is to serve your husband, Correct. which I will do. But I also have stuff to do. So I have gotten a lot of people being like, your husband lets you post pictures like that? My man is hyping me up. What you talking about? You know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. the balance and the pressure of people judging me has been harder in LA. Like people back home in Missouri don't understand it. People here in LA are like, you're married. Ew. So I just have to find like my own lane. Yeah, I know. People have this misconception of marriage. And I understand because like there's different guys and different girls out there. But again, people don't know that, you know, I've 
told you you can do whatever you want. Period. If, like, you want to stay at home and travel every single day and never work again in your life, you can do that. Yeah. If you want to do your own thing and create movies, I'll fund it and do whatever you want. Yeah. And um, that's obviously the beauty of, of having, you know, a partner instead of doing everything uh, yourself. But L.A. is kind of crazy because it feels like they make you feel like if you're not at, like, a function or a party, you're missing out. And then, like, but everybody's all fake here. All these influencer Ooh. events and people will be talking and stuff, so... It's, yeah, it's crazy. people don't even really like each other. And I think that's the frustrating part because it's like, y'all really want me to get dressed and leave my house, yeah. my peaceful house, yeah. to come and socialize with you. And y'all don't like it? No, nah, it's not happening. Which was probably a small factor, but a factor in us leaving L.A. and going to Texas. Yeah. Um, the other factor was like taxes and like not wanting to be spending so much money on two penthouses in mm-hmm. downtown L.A., especially with the lack of security we get here, which Ooh. we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about Texas and not the state in general, but just the experience? Because for those who don't know on the Sweaty Gang channel, we yeah. decided to leave L.A. and move to Texas, which you can see on Secure the Swag only right now. Um, and we decided to move back. So, um, yeah, t- tell them what happened. Yeah. If you guys are not caught up to date on like what's everything Swaley, make sure you guys are watching the episodes because a few episodes of Swaley Gang have come out by now. And you can see it on Secure the Swag and even like old Bailey, Bailey Daily episodes. But I'm actually really sad because I thought Texas was going to be a happy medium for us. We were about to build a house. Texas is like, you know, not as slow as Missouri, but not as fast as L.A. So I thought it was going to be a happy, happy place for us. But we had some shady things happen on multiple fronts. And it just wasn't a good fit, especially for Swag, because he's such a city boy. So now I really don't know what we're going to do and, like, what our future even looks like because I had this dream, you know, since I was little of, like, okay, when I'm getting married, I'll get a cute little house and we'll live in the suburbs and I'll have my kids. And then I marry this, like, city-ass husband. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not having that. So I don't know what the future looks like. Yeah, no, the suburbs is cool. It's just we were, like, too deep in the suburbs. (laughs) And I had no friends, and (laughs) I wasn't relating to nobody out there, especially (laughs) with my chains and my car. Like, nobody. You said you went to the, you said you went to play basketball, and you had a do-rag on. Bro, I had a do-rag on. People looked like I was crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I I just didn't feel comfortable there. Um, But most importantly, we weren't getting our house, which was the biggest reason why we moved there. You know, like, for... (sighs) For six, seven million dollars out here in Los Angeles, you can get something nice in Studio City, but you're not going to get a compound. But in Texas, we had a 23,000 23, square, square foot, feet. literally mansion, like yeah. a palace. Like we had literally two different places. We had our mansion, and then we had a big our compound workout facility. workout facility. Literally yeah. the, the Swayley facility with like a inside NBA regulation <laughs> basketball court, 30 like. Square is crazy. I had my hot yoga studio, guys. We had the MMA house. ring. We I'm had so sad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had everything in there only for... Then to come back here. And it's, like, frustrating because it's, it's like... Like, this sounds like, like first world problems dead ass. And I'm it so does, sorry. It does. It like, does. Like, I'm does, not trying does. to sound like a crazy. For us to be like, well, we had to move back into our penthouse. Like, no, no. It sounds bad. It's yeah, like, it sounds I know. terrible. I know. But it's also, like, no. I'm standing on that because... I thought this chapter had closed, and I really did. Like, we peaced out of L.A. I was cool. Didn't even say bye to nobody. I have no, no <laughs> going away party. I'm out. And then yeah. just to have to turn around and come back, it's just like, okay, a little frustrating. Yeah, no, I wanted the house. And to this day, I still want a, a mansion like that because, you know, a situation happened last night that caused me to be like, yeah, I got to get the hell up out of here. Oh, yeah. yeah let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. No, so – um. Me, let me set the me scene. Me and you. You can set, set the, screen. the scene. I had the most <laughs> perfect day, guys. So long story short, you guys will have seen. Um, eventually, we had our gender reveal this weekend. Okay. So then Chris never sleeps with me. And because, let's do this. Not That sounds weird. But Chris never goes to I'm sleep working. at I'm the working. same time I'm as working. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he likes to work at night. So by the time I'm waking up, he's just getting in bed. So this beautiful night, we're having a great time. I'm sleeping. I can feel, you know, his arm as I'm sleeping. And at 2.30 in the morning, I get a ring on my phone. And the security guards panic. They're like, hey, Bailey, somebody just hit your car. Get down here right now. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, they did exactly that. We came downstairs and her car was messed up like her license plate was <laughs> off and like she's parked right like next to a wall right and somebody hit the car and the car like pushed pushed into the, the wall. wall so her back part of her car is all messed up and there was a pole behind a me pole the pole behind- is on the ground there's a puddle of fluid like it's just a mess it was a mess and we were very upset but what happened was apparently the guy who hit the car 
something was leaking from their car. It was um, Freon. Yeah. So the guy, and this is the crazy part, it was not a tap. This guy literally it was bulldozed my car. And then I'm sure he, it's like, you can, oh, I'm going to show pictures too. Because you can literally see him trying to back up and rearrange. And then he hit my car again the second time. And it was nothing but Freon leaking from his car, my car to his car. So we caught the man. We caught him. But he wasn't there. What's crazy is that like. We had to track the, the Freon, fluid. like literally on the floor, Nancy you could true. track from where her car was all the way in a circle and it was a whole pattern <laughs> up until the parking spot. Like he, he didn't think it to get a broom or a mop, something like he, he did not it. cover his he tracks. Was sauce. He was lit. He That's was like I'm sauce. saying. He yeah. goes upstairs and like two hours later and then all of a sudden we get a call and then they're like, okay, we see it's clearly tracked here. We're going to call the person who has his car. They call the man. He comes downstairs and immediately he starts laughing. Like smirking so like an evil, me, like yeah, evil person. Me, DJ, and Bailey just start going off on him. Off, off, Mostly off, me. Off, off. Mostly me. Mostly you. But no, we were all going off up until the point he said I wasn't even driving. So y'all yelling for no reason. Once he said that, I kind of calmed down. Cause I was like, okay, then who was driving? And then he said, oh, I own a rental company and somebody rented from me. And he hit the car, but now he's upstairs in my room. And he's, he's scared, like to, scared come to come down. Yeah. So me, as a liable owner, I'm going to come down and try to make the, to make the things right. I think I was lying the whole time. First he was of all. lying he the was whole lying time. The but that also let me back up because the first thing, I was on edge from the moment he came down because he came down smirking and smiling. And the first thing he said was, I was like, why are you, why are you smiling? Who are you? And he was like, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just being nosy. And so I'm like, what are you yeah, even here for? And then started pressing him at that point up until the point he said, yeah, he admitted well, to I, why I, he was coming. Exactly. I didn't hit the car. Somebody else did. Long story short, maybe 20 minutes later, I have Bailey go upstairs um, because, again, she's pregnant, so she, don't, she shouldn't be. I forgot. And that, you know what, stuff. guys? We got to talk about that, too, because I really forgot. Like, your emotions come at you so quick to where I had DJ and Chris being like, yo, chill out. And I'm like, why are they mad at me? Like, I clearly am. Why are you guys yelling at me? And then I was like, oh. Okay, you're right. Let me calm down. Yeah, I went to send her upstairs so we can deal with it ourselves. <laughs> and then we got into a loud argument with the guy. Um, but then he started to threaten us. You know, oh, he, yeah. He started to threaten us. He literally said. And you know what, guys? This is crazy, too. This guy was bold. You could tell he was drunk because he was all of 5'4". Yeah, he, he was very, very short. <laughs> no, very, very God. short. Y'all think I'm like, he was nah, five, he was very four. short. But the issue is he had a gun on him. Oh, he did. The security guard said he had oh, a gun no. on his hip, which I never saw. I That's never knew terrible. that. But the security guard this morning when I was with him said, yeah, no, nah, I saw the gun on his hip. He literally told me, well, DJ was in his face, like yelling at him, like about the fight. Because we all know DJ's MMA fighter. DJ's, and ha- DJ's hands are DJ's registered. DJ's hands are registered. You know what I mean? It's very serious. Yeah, he's a real fighter. But the guy was looking at him was like, yo, you don't know who I am. I'm with this gang. I got a gun with me right now. This would be a last day breathing. I'll gun yeah, you down right like, now. Like, I'll have my, my people come gun you down tomorrow. Bro, it's, it, it, was like, t- it was crazy. But it's like, where's the apology? First of all, uh, it, exactly. You hit my Where's heart. the apology? He comes down drunk. He's drunk, making threats, saying he will kill us. And mind you, like, back to the original point, something like this, which was last night, is like a wake-up call mm-hmm. on we should not be in downtown LA. I don't care how beautiful this penthouse is at this point, even though I love it and it's my favorite place. It's like we pay way too much money to be dealing with that, especially because one of our – Dustin, one of our videographers, his car got broken into. Poor thing. Like, it, it's like right? th- th- there's no reason no why said. our team should come here and be like, okay, am I good by the time I get back to my car? And now, I, now yeah. I feel like that. No facts. You know and I mean? that's what I'm saying. And it's guarded. It's like we have a gate. We have security guards. So the fact that they're they like overwhelmed. Care. Yeah. Like our security guards were like trying to fight this guy. It's just like, no, no, no. Yeah. We got to get up out of here. So there has to be some type of medium because it's going to look crazy on security swag and the Swayley show and, and whatever. Where it's like we just got back to the penthouse. We're moving. Now we're going to Sherman Oaks <laughs> or Beverly Hills. <laughs> hey, we get about it here. But you know what also, mean? don't tell the people how many times. We've been married for three years next week. How many times have we moved in these three years? We've moved seven times in seven three years. Seven times. Yeah. That's, that's not normal. We've moved seven times. Now, all seven times wasn't because of safety. <laughs> like, five of those times was because we started making more we money. It's like, nah, I want to make a place. Better place, better place, better place. Yeah. But... Yeah, no, nah, this time is literally for safety and security, and it's like, I don't know. And we're not time. even including, like, the shows even on. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm not including moving to Prague and all that stuff as well, but 
it's it's wild because we go downstairs to the security guards and they're just like, yeah, y'all don't know what's going on. We got a, a mob here, a mafia here. Yeah, we had a drug floor. bust this morning. I'm not even gonna talk to you about that because oh that gosh. was that was a mess. There was like 50 cop cars and a SWAT <laughs> team and a helicopter and four dogs downstairs waiting for some guy on the 17th floor. Yeah, it was wild. It was crazy. Well, I, I wasn't gonna talk about. I'm gonna okay. say that because that was <laughs> wild, bro. Like I had to stay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, okay. I'm trying to get your car fixed and they're like, oh, we don't, we can't deal with yeah, that. Yeah, right they now. were like, we can't send a cop unit to you guys because nobody got hurt. This is not priority meanwhile 12 cop cars are next door yep. trying to dr- bust this like drug lord yep. so i'm like no and then to cap the story off i can't the guy runs off like you know what i mean he yeah. goes to the seventh floor and drives off as so soon as we because no he was like you don't need any cops you don't need cops i'll just pay you under the table while i own a body shop we're like no then my man gets to the seventh floor and leaves there's no there's a fake number there's a yeah. fake insurance meanwhile card. the car is gone this morning so at this point the car is gone, the car is gone. wow <laughs> you didn't know that i did not know that i didn't <laughs> go downstairs yeah it's not there Oh, wow. They're probably going to take that car to the shop so we can't identify The license plate has changed. It's all, it's, it, it's That's gone. what I'm saying. Oh, my God. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so meanwhile, anyways, wow. needless to say, wow, um, this crazy. is the reason why downtown LA is just probably not a good fit for us. Like, I think when, before we had a child and my baby, Belly, then it was fine because we don't care. But now that it's like, I'm not about to be pushing my stroller in the parking lot with these drunk people. Not at all. W- ideally, where would you like to live when it comes to our baby or the lifestyle you'd like to give uh, our baby? Like, I, okay, no, you tell me because this is the problem. I told you I had a, a, a picture in my head yes. and now that's out of the window. Well, the, the picture would have been fine if <laughs> like in, in Dallas, if we were at the Ritz Carlton, uh-huh. that was a beautiful, was a beautiful, state. beautiful place we should have moved to. We decided to move to Plano, Texas to be close to the mansion, and that didn't work out. So right. it turned me off to Dallas. But I'm not opposed to uh, the suburban life. Um, the issue is I want, like, different places now. Like, I want to live in Puerto Rico. I want to have a place in Los Angeles. I want to have a place in Kansas City, you know, your family. I want to have a place in Greenwich, Connecticut, where I'm from. And um, it just depends on what comes first. You mm-hmm. know, is the Beverly Hills, the Sherman Oaks, Encino, Calabasas, is that move first, and then it's Puerto Rico or whatnot. But... I think the safety of our child obviously is very, very important, and that comes first. Look at you, great, well, great parent. You feel me? You feel me? Yeah. Right? Like, come That's on, a man. Got you. Wow, so proud of you. So let's talk about. Uh, let's switch over and talk about motherhood and fatherhood and pregnancy. So, Ooh. how do you feel? And give them the real on like everything that's been going on so far when it comes to pregnancy, um, because they may not know right now. Motherhood is serious, but in a great way. So I always wanted to be a mom. That's that's first. So a lot of people are like, oh, my God. Like, it's, are you okay? Yeah. Definitely wanted to be a mom. Just was not sure when that would happen. So the fact that it's happening now, I feel very grateful for. Um, morning sickness, disgusting. Not interested. Zero stars, boo-boo, throwing mm-hmm. tomatoes. Um, I did not like that. I really wish that somebody would have given me, like, more of a warning of, like, what that looks like. Because I don't throw up. Like, that's just, like, not my thing. So I felt like I was having to fight vomit for like six weeks yeah, and course. i did not puke of course snaps to me of i don't course. do that <laughs> but it was real hard like you know so i didn't like that but as soon as the morning sickness kind of wore off i feel like pregnancy has been a lot better like my energy is getting back better lots of sleeping mood swings are on 12 and i'm so sorry for that okay. uh you know like it's just very interesting but now i have to start thinking it's not only like oh i have a nursery to get ready and then you know family to build where are we gonna live how am i gonna raise my child like there's just so many things i have to think about you know yeah is there anything you're looking forward to the most when it comes to like this entire process or having a baby or (laughs) just the fact that you have a kid so crazy okay don't say birth baby i thought you were about to say that who says that you said this sounds crazy i'm not saying birth are you kidding me i'm getting past that i actually just want a friend i know that sounds so crazy but like now i have my own little personal friend and i don't have to worry about having hanging out with anybody else i can just have my own friend so that's really exciting yeah what are your thoughts on um actual birth you know we've been doing a lot of research (laughs) and like on hospitals and stuff um okay this is gonna get really serious yeah i'll make you stop laughing this this (laughs) this is really serious okay i'm sorry um yeah, so for the people who don't know, I'm very, like, into um, just education, holistic wellness, 
and I don't play when it comes to my body. So the main thing that I wanted people to know is that um, black women mortality when it comes to childbirth is a really serious thing, especially in hospitals, because one right now, um, even before the pandemic, um, like the voices of black women weren't being heard when it came to childbirth. They felt like our pain tolerance was higher with like no genetic proof that that's even true. So they would allow things to happen to us that would lead to women and children dying. So I already wasn't uncomfortable. Like I already was uncomfortable with that. Secondly, the pandemic made most hospitals short staffed. So now they rush women in and out of the birthing rooms of if you don't have your baby at a certain time, we're mm -hmm. just going to cut you open. Mm -hmm. Y'all got me messed up. Yeah. We not cutting nothing nowhere. That's not um, so now Swag and I are kind of on this journey of considering um, at home birth, which also means non-medicated birth. And that's a whole different thing where I'm like, if I have a child without any drug, you're not going to be able to tell me anything about life because I just am going to feel like a beast, which is exciting. But at the same time, that means like I would have to have a baby possibly at home in a birthing tub. Swag wants to get in it with me. Like there's just a lot of things to where people, it's not as simple as like, okay, I'm having a baby. Let me go to the hospital. Like I have to prepare. It's like a marathon. Yeah, no. And reading like all the horror stories when it comes to like, you know, hospitals and in and out and rushing and yeah. just giving you an epidural or like, indu like inducing is what it's called. Yeah. Like forcing you. Yeah. So the drugs that they give you, forcing you, there's uh, C-sections. There's. Um, I didn't know. So when you said about C-sections as well, there was a story or something I said that like sometimes people don't even need the C-section. C-section, the time is just running out and they need to get them out the room. They need the room. That is wild. Yeah. So the crazy part is this. So. And this is, I'm like learning, like birthing process, sometimes contractions stall. So you dilate a certain inches and then your body might get stressed out and stall. So at the hospital, if you dilate seven inches and then, you know, you go a few hours without dilating the rest, they're just going to cut you open because they're tired of waiting. Mm. Versus if you have a baby naturally, you just let your baby continue to dilate yeah, on its own time. Its time. There's no reason to rush it. Like there's nothing wrong with you. But the hospital yeah. thinks surgery, surgery, surgery. So they're like, we need to operate. And it's like, y'all need back up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think that may be the, the path we go um, to the people out there. Do you recommend practicing? Yeah, <laughs> Pe here we go. people who have been. Pre yeah, me. Um, it's so funny because it's like one a necessary evil. Like it's not I'm not going to give it zero stars, um, but it's about a good one and a half right now. Out of ten. It's a one out of yes, ten. Exactly. Yeah, because it's a necessary evil. I would like to have a child. But am I, though, like an enthusiast that's like, I love being pregnant. I feel so beautiful. No, but, no you don't. Why are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you lying? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I, I've told you this several times that I think this is, I want more kids, but I think this is the only child you should be carrying. Yeah. Like, Swag am, was, like, actually mad at me. Like, he I was, was like, very upset. Yeah, like, baby, I don't like this. I don't like seeing you like this. You, why are you even doing this? If anything happens to I you. I told Bailey like that pissed. from the beginning, before we even got pregnant, that we should have done surrogacy. But her, I wanted to carry, though, and like, I know, that's the hard you, part. You wanted to carry one, but then you also said you were open to surrogacy. But then, like, your mom said, kept saying, the first one got to be yours. Yeah. And then why do parents the, shame us? Can we talk know. about we'll that? We'll talk about that out there. Yeah, I have right yeah. here as well. But literally in the third or fourth week, you're like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing this again. Like, we're definitely going to surrogate next time. And obviously, you feel better now, but... How do you feel now about the second and third child? Maybe fourth or I feel like third. if I, and like this is like no shade towards um, anybody because I'm open minded. So y'all don't throw shade at me. I feel like if I can be like, hey, yo, surrogate, let's pop in some twins, call it a day. Call I'm it a done. day. Like, done. I, go ahead. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, done. then that way we'll have three and then we can really just get it over with. But for me to carry two more children or twins, no, I, I've seen why uh, no, Nick no, and Priyanka no. did it and uh, Kim Kardashian did it and stuff. Because it's like, one, obviously it hurts. And I, I'm obviously seeing you go through this process. <laughs> but like, also, it's like you have the ability to really still live your life and do what you need to do. And somebody yeah. can, you know, carry for you. And then they can obviously be an integral part if they want or if you want or not at all. But it's just like here, <laughs> like at the nine month mark. Yeah. And you don't go through any and of the I symptoms. And they get paid a good amount. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I just seem smart. I I like, hey, listen, I like that you're open. I really like that's another thing. Like, I am happy to have married a man that does not put like the social pressures on me of like, well, you you're not even a real mom if you don't carry your child like that stuff. People really say to people. I know. So I'm happy that you are giving me options because I don't want to be forced in like a box on any front. No, so. for sure. And it depend it's the same because uh, one of my friends was saying that, um, he thinks he's done with like kids, but he may want one more, but thinks he's done. But since he thinks he's done, he wants his girl to get like her two sides. Is that was called or like, yeah. right. And it's just like, 
bro, why don't you get like zipped up? You know what I mean? But he was like, nah, I see my uncle. He that's, walk around like this the whole time. It's, but you know what I mean? Like, it's but just also, gotta be though, open let's about talk it. about that. I want to know for the, the guys that are watching this, because I know you guys are watching this. Um, why y'all so selfish? Because, uh, no, for real, a vasectomy for a man is a snip, snip, two week healing process. A uh, tube tie for a woman is they cut us open, they burn our tubes together so that we can never produce a child again. And then we have to heal for six to eight weeks. There's why no... are you being selfish? And, <laughs> and let me finish because a vasectomy is reversible. Yeah, you know? know, like why y'all playing games? Yeah, it's reversible. Whereas, like, for girls, it's not. I remember, like, Neo, you know, that was his yeah. girlfriend got Yo, her that tube was tied. Tragic. That was and then tragic. he broke up with her, and now she can't yeah. have kids with nobody else in the future you know what i mean I, I, don't, I think from doing my research i don't think girls should get their tube side only because you may change your mind whereas like a guy you can get a vasectomy and then you can have sex and come inside whoever you want you're good and all of a sudden <laughs> if you want to have kids go to back to the doctor and yeah. become and reverse and it I, yep undo it so i don't know i just think a lot of guys just don't like Tristan Thompson, they just don't understand. They just don't Tristan understand. Tristan Thompson, they just don't understand. The they way. just don't understand at all. He's getting girls pregnant left no, and right. Don't no, understand. real talk. I don't know why he didn't do the the thing. I don't understand. He makes beautiful children. He though. does. You know what I mean? But um, let's go back to what you were saying earlier about pressures from your family um, or just society in general. Do you think that obviously played a part in the pregnancy or just where you are in your current situation yes. right now? Yes. And um. My mom will hate listening to this, and I don't care because I want her to know. That I don't I'll, care, Robin, Robin Dayton. Robin Dayton, <laughs> you need to know because she is like, like my mom and Chris's mom later, my mom for years since we got married. Are you guys working on my grandbabies? Where are my grandbabies? Da, 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 da. Like it was very like happy, you know, like and even like, well, your dad's getting old. You know, we're getting old. Are we ever going to have grandchildren? And it was frustrating because I would say to her, I'm like, mom, I'm the youngest kid you know, of your daughters. And she's like, well, you're the only one that's married. Your sisters are not dating anymore. That ain't our fault. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, why are you putting this pressure on me? So it's crazy because it's like we got that pressure and then Swag's mom turned 50. She's 51 now. And so she's like, well, boo, I thought I was going to have grandkids before 50. but Yeah, but she would so, say that like maybe once a year. No, like, Or maybe, no. maybe once or twice. She said, it, she said it a little bit more after she turned 50, you know. So then it was just kind of like, Okay. Nah, I felt way more pressure from There's her There's definitely more pressure from because my Because, like, grand, like, obviously your grandparents, and then, obviously, your mom kept saying it over and over again. She's yeah. like, 60. And, and my grandparents died really young. They died really so young. So, there was, like, okay, we have to have children. And if, you're, if your parents are, like, about to be 60, and then we have kids, we wait three years. They're going to be 63, nine months. Yeah, we were calculating, like, okay, well, if teenager, we wait till he's 30, yeah. they're going to be this old. And it's just, like, I don't know. I think that definitely played a big part in us. Because I remember when we first got married, and then the second year, and even a little bit into the third year, we were like, yo, we are waiting until we're 30, 32, 33. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, I think the pressure got to you. Because we had a conversation that wasn't recorded, but I wish it was recorded. But it's before we had our team where I was just like, yo, like. Oh, yeah. Swag was Swag came to me on. Um, it was actually really being, sad. I, I cried because he came to me on a vulnerable moment of just like, hey, like, I'm happy you're pregnant. But like this put a lot of pressure on me and it. It wasn't planned. I really wish we could have planned it. Yeah, because I felt like I was forced to, uh, or forced and rushed to get you. No, real realistic. We had yeah. this conversation. I felt like due to all the pressures from like your family, um, it kind of like messed with your mind a little bit about wanting to get pregnant. And I felt like it kind of, like I said, I felt forced to get pregnant as opposed to, yo, we have a plan. Like my plan was obviously to have like, let's say 20 million in the account and we got this house and boom, 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 we're good. All right, cool. And obviously you can never plan a pregnancy, but I just felt like really, really off guard. And obviously like I had to have done it because I play a part in uh, sex, obviously, but just you hearing it over it. and over again, like we need to get pregnant, we need to get pregnant or y'all should get pregnant. Y'all have, it's just like, then we actually are pregnant. Now I'm very, very happy. But that first two weeks, it was like, yo, like. <laughs> this was really, really, really forced and rushed, you know, yeah. because it's different if we kept saying at this age, we want to have kids literally for three years straight. We said we do not want to have kids for years. And then all of a sudden it's like, I want to have kids. And then like two months later, we're pregnant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where I was when we first, first got pregnant. But obviously, yeah. I'm, and also for happy. the people, too, we got pregnant really quick. So we got pregnant a month after I got off of birth control. So it wasn't like, I think people it's hard because it's different for each person. We had a couple friends that have been trying for six, seven for months. Sure. I have a couple friends that are like, it took us a year to get pregnant. So I kind of was like, Oh, we will, you know, like try. And then we tried and it worked. Yeah. So it, I don't know. It's just hard. I know. 
I, like I said, I'm happy now. Everybody keeps saying it's going to be the biggest blessing of our lives. I'm happy. I just wanted to tell the people that where we were our first week or two because we have not posted. True, but years, you're you like know? never allowed to tell our child. That like, yeah, mom and dad didn't plan you. Oh, I, no. I, I'll tell. Why? What? <laughs> I was told that was an accident. That's rude. That's not rude. That's like, <laughs> that's, I'm not that's supposed a, to be here. That's a you know no, me? Me, baby, no. no I'm not, I'm, I want my child to I'm know. not going to tell them, because they weren't an accident. They were mm-hmm. kind of rushed. They were, uh, but not an accident. Just a, a, a plan. So, babe, to kind of uh, switch topics for a second, tell the people um, exactly what you hope to come from this podcast and our Swayly show, who you hope to interview and talk to, and what topics you hope to cover. Entertainment fun i want us to build a community and i want us to get like closer together especially because you guys have only seen tv version of swag and um bay you haven't seen like the at home version That's really you've only seen like cbs contract yeah swag you've seen our MTV professionals Professional. yeah That's yeah you know what I'm saying? you haven't seen at home and so it's like even though it makes me like a little cringe i want to talk about weird stuff with you guys like we've never talked about sex but like you guys clearly know but you know and then it's like dating single people like i want to talk about literally every single thing i i I don't want there to be like any boundaries because i feel like never if we're like really friends we should talk about stuff no for sure i I think that's gonna scare a little bit of the sweaty game oh i I think people are gonna be like this is not what we asked for from you especially the uh, i think our fans will like it like the people who subscribed on the sweaty game channel I think the other people in the community from that reality pool community gonna look at us like we're crazy that's okay we're, we're, we're sharing more than their faves or anybody else in the world. You know what I mean? So I just want to be open. I haven't heard that in a long anything. time. Your faves. Right? <laughs> Your faves. Your faves could never. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not any and everything. I don't think there should be any boundaries. And I compare it to Red Table Talk where they literally talk about everything. There's nothing that's on the table. Um, and I don't know how to start. Kind of yeah. So well. that's what I want. I just want us to open up a conversation, a dialogue for us to grow together and to really let you in. Because one thing I don't do is fake influence. And I hate being on the socials and I feel like I can't be myself. Okay. So I just want you guys to, to know what's going on mm-hmm. so that nobody's even surprised anymore. Um, secondly, the Swayley gang, uh, you guys saw Secure the Swag and you saw um, Bailey's World and both of those like shows really did well. And so I got a lot of feedback that they wanted to see content of me and Swag. I want couples, I want singles, I want you know business people, we want like real talk, like I want sex gurus, I want financial gurus, I want pre, you know, and it doesn't have Not to be. All. I'm saying it doesn't have to be couple stuff. Like me and Swag are both separate humans, and it doesn't like I don't know I, the whole like coupley podcast thing that the. It's not going to be cute and love advice every not week. It's just not. not at all. You're We're going to talk get... about the metaverse. <laughs> We're going to talk about whatever we want. Yep. WWE, if we want to. Like, we're going to talk about whatever we want. And that's the best part about our relationship is that we're friends first. So I, this whole couples boot camp, you might get, like, an episode or two. But Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right now, this is probably going to be the only couple let's talk. You know, but no, like, realistically, <laughs> we're going to have a, a wide range. We're going to go from potentially Grant Cardone on a financial yeah. point to like Tiana Trump and oh. Abella Danger. You know what I mean? Like Turn porn up. stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, to, I would like to interview a porn star. I know, but I'm saying going from that to like a family member to like my brother who may be single, doesn't really like believe in love like that to like, Aww. you know what I mean? So it's just like, there's going to be a, a wide range of people who's going to be on this I show. I didn't know he didn't believe in love like He does, that. but you know what I mean? He keeps saying for him to fall in love, you got to kick him in the head. Yeah. Like a punk kick from Randy Orton. Like realistically, yeah. like you got to really kick him in the head. Off you know of what a mean? ladder. Like, <laughs> like something <laughs> for him to fall in love. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, so we want to include just all of it, like, you know, and I don't want there to like just no limits. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the Swayley Gang podcast, and um, we will come back to you next week with another one. But tune into the Swayley show that should be dropping in a few days as well. Appreciate you guys.